hey friends, welcome to another edition of the Thriving Christian Artist Podcast. Super glad that you are here with me. Listen, uh, I have a lot of great guests on every week, but none are a dearer friend and a greater artist than Lynn Reinhardt. Uh, Lynn and, and her husband, Mike, have been dear, dear friends of ours for many years, and we don't get to see enough of them now that we've moved to Texas, and even when we moved to North Carolina, but Lynn, super glad that you are here. Uh, welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so glad we're going to get time to chat with each other. I know. Um, it's like like we're actually sitting in the living room. So we're <laughs> I know. Like that was I don't know everybody said this but the the good thing that came out of COVID was Zoom and connecting with people in a different way that you don't that you didn't get to connect with when I I was like that. That's right. That's right. So, so Well, hey, listen, you've done this before. I've I neglected to see what episode you were on previously, but uh for those folks maybe that are just getting to know you and uh, your story. Give us the, the thumbnail sketch of who you are, what you do creatively, and then we'll we'll kind of jump into what's on your heart today. So. so yeah, I'm a professional quilter. So I do a lot of fiber art. Um, I've written patterns, gotten patterns published, all that stuff. I do online teaching, um, not only on my own platform, but on Creative Spark, which is a part of CNT publishing. So I have classes on there as well. So um kind of in the quilt fiber art world is where I kind of live a little bit just yeah. artistically but you know I think first and foremost a lover of God so there's yeah. that yeah absolutely you know I think about our journey just as friends and and you know how that it evolved and um, we were both artists kind of on our own in the hobby world but then God started waking us both up back in 2007 eight, nine, you know all this time and and beginning, uh, you know, to to really show us that there was more uh, in the kingdom than what he wanted to do it, than just a hobby uh, for mm -hmm. us. W when did you start really, you know, just to, to roll the tape back, realizing that, man, God's got something on this thing that, that I do. And I make quilts. Things happen. I feel I sense God. I see I see his presence show up. Yeah. Well, I think um, the very first quilt that I made uh, I was making it for my sister for her wedding. And I, as I was putting, it was a log cabin quilt, very basic kind of block. And I was learning how to do quilting at that point. But God started talking to me and revealing himself through the fabrics that were chosen for the quilt that I really thought I chose. You know, like I went to the store and bought this fabric. <laughs> right. Like, and but God started saying, you know, the center of the log cabin block is normally red and it represents the heart of the home. And I had chosen a fabric that had sheep in it. And God said, I put that in there and here's why. And it's because, you know, Angie and Tom, my bro brother in law and sister, um, they're going to have me as the center of their home. And wow. and he started revealing like all these fabrics that. I thought were chosen because of artistic, you know, attraction reasons. They look good together, those kinds of things. Um, and God was really kind of hovering over me going, yeah, no, I worked through you because I'm going to use this to bless them. Yeah. And so it was just this real, just from the very beginning, a connection of I don't create without that kind of relationship, that talk, that interaction with the holy spirit and father yeah. god you know in my creation and it's right. my it's him creating through me which i know probably everybody who's on here says that but it really is well i mean i think you know surprisingly enough i think as i've you know mentored artists and been around this world especially with with christians you got a lot of people that are creating for the glory of god and you know i want god to bless it and that sort of thing but i think even as much as we talk about it this whole concept of inviting the Holy Spirit in, into the creative process that he not only wants to transform me as the artist, but also release transformation through me uh, in what I do. That is still, you know, people are still waking up to, to that process. And, um, and our, you know, for, for both of us, I think, I don't know, maybe you can speak to this even. It, it seems like for 2D artists, you know, and even musicians, I'm speaking from a musician standpoint, but also painters, you know, you get a lot of people that talk about creating with, moving with, worshiping with the Holy Spirit. But when it comes to the craft world, the fine craft world that we kind of both have existed in for years, it's 
you know, when you're talking about the combination of materials and techniques and, and all this sort of thing, somehow people think that it can't happen there, but it can absolutely happen there just as, as much as, as anywhere else, right? Yeah, I mean, I think quilting is so integral, even in the Bible, you know, um, they say Paul was a tent maker. Well, there are tent makers in Egypt right now that have made quilts. Wow. So, you know, and it in Proverbs, it says, um, she makes coverings for her bed. Well, that's yeah. a quilt, yeah. you know? <laughs> so like for, for me to separate out the creative and what I do in my art form or how that actually comes about, that's just like, there's no way to divide that. Right. Like it's not. And I guess really what has started driving me this past two years, I think I, I, I emailed you a, a weird email. I, something's on me. I've got something to tell you, you know, and it's been kind of brewing in me for a couple of years, but God said to me about two years ago, he said, all artists are prophets. Yeah. And I went, what? That's what, what God, I like. So this past year and a half, I have literally gone on. I've always had a prophetic gifting. Um, and this past year, I really leaned into that. I don't know if that you know this, but so right when COVID happened, my business fell apart and okay. went to nothing. And um, so my business partner walked away and we are now stuck in a house, you know, and I spent a lot of time in the sewing room then, but we were just stuck inside. And it was like, God, I've lost everything. Yeah, like, right what <laughs> are we going to do? Um, and God started talking to me about the prophetic and about our arts and prophets being um, artists and how we've got to raise up the prophetic artist voice. Yeah. And I have spent the past year and a half journey on this. And just really see the calling of as we are learning to create and, and in our relationship with God, like just what you said earlier, my artist goes through me and affects culture. Right. Well, that's what the prophets are called to do. Right. And you are prophetically affecting culture. And just as, you know, we are training up artists to be skilled in their art form you know, we need to train up healthy prophets yeah. and people who understand how to prophesy and how to, you know, speak into others' lives, not only through your art form, because there's all kinds of different prophets from the ecstatic prophets to, you know, whatever. And like the seers, the, you know, Nabi prophets, all those kinds of things. And it's like, God, and it just became this, um, this journey of God's just showing me almost every time I look at the Bible, it's like, you know, there's the prophet again and yeah. he's being filled and he's skilled, you know, he's, he's creating, he's creating the culture that God wants to establish here on earth. And so that's been my crazy journey the past few years that, you know, it's not just this. Yeah. It yeah, is absolutely. that. And it's yeah, this that's creation, vehicle, right? That's just the vehicle, right? And that's just a vehicle of how right. God speaks through the artist. And I think the artist, and I'm not saying when he said, when I heard God say, all artists are prophets, I was like, like, really God? Like, are you sure? He goes, they're not all redeemed, but, but they're all prophets. The, the interesting thing though, you know, so many people talk about this idea of, Christian art versus secular art. And it's like all of God's gifts come without repentance, right? There, we, we get the choice, right? Are we going to point this in the direction of the kingdom? Are we going to be a conduit for his life and life? Or are we going to take that gift and, and point it in the other direction? But all that gift is from the Lord, right? Wherever, right. however it manifests itself. And so, so Lynn, talk, you know, one of the things that I've really endeavored to do, um, and, and maybe this is part of my redemptive gift of, of an exhorter and trying to get people to, you know, live the life that God's called them to and all this sort of thing. But yeah. I, I think especially for artists who are Christians, this idea of, of the prophetic and prophetic art, it can almost seem, number one, it's exciting. Woo, God's going to use me in this process. Number two, 
depending on where you're at in your identity journey, <laughs> and which is, you know, all the other issues, that, that can be a, it can feel like a lot of pressure and the enemy can come in and like, oh, you didn't do it right. You're going to miss God. What if you miss God? And what if you say it wrong? All this stuff. And so people actually get paralyzed when they're trying to operate in the gift. So talk about that. Cause I know you, and I mean, we've not, even, we've not planned this conversation, but I know yeah. your heart and I know, you know, your heart for healing and all that. And that is a huge uh, foundation, you know, in our life to whether or not we can operate freely in the things that God's trying to bring in our life. Right. Right. And so there needs to be, you know, foundational types of training. And I'm actually going to, I'll tell you about a workshop I'm going to run in October, kind of just for artists of, you know, how do you, how do you step off on this prophetic journey? Sure. If you're called as prophets, you need some foundational training to do that. And so I'm, I've developed this workshop and I'm, I'm going to be running that in October. Awesome. Um, but but it's really, I mean, you said identity. This is part of your identity. It's a part of who you are. Now, your identity is all in Christ. Right. It's all in Jesus. But at the same time, he's going to manifest through you in a way that he doesn't manifest through anyone else. Yeah. Through your unique and you need to have a secure, safe environment to learn how, how what is prophecy, right? What does it encompass? And like how I, I like that's intimidating. I think it was intimidating when people were like, when I started being called out as a prophet, like it was intimidating. Like, I don't know what that means. Like it was years, <laughs> it that was years ago. Uh, somebody was praying for me and they were like, you're a prophet. And I'm like, okay, oh. that's nice. Thanks. Thanks for playing. That's good. I have no idea what that means. Right. And I think that that's where the, the body of Christ is coming. We are coming into a season where the artists in their prophetic voice are going to establish culture in a way we've never seen before. And I'm saying it is soon. I yeah. feel it in my bones. It is very soon. Within the next two to three years, we are going to see the greatest move of the prophetic artists we have not seen before. Yeah. And it's not yeah. in the church. Right. It's not that it needs to be in that building. It is your call to who you are, your identity. And that foundationally has to be established. And you just need training. And and the church, I think, maybe has been afraid of prophecy or it's That's kind messy, of put right? up in this, <laughs> you know, crazy corner or whatever. But there are too many artists that function that way that have been closeted and are afraid to express what they're seeing and feeling and, and in the spirit world. And it's like, but God has redeemed it. It is from the Lord. Yeah. It is your sanctified imagination. You have the creative creator inside of you that is wanting to establish land on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. Well, you know, and I think, I, and you'll you'll remember exactly what I'm talking about. Our our good mutual friend Greg Tankersley, um, who I've not also seen in a long long time. Um, he preached a sermon one time on bowling with the bumpers up. You remember this and this idea that when when we're in the kingdom, you know, our job is to kind of I, I'm going to murder the, the the message, but our job is to kind of throw the ball, and God's the one that puts the bumpers up because you know He's the one that that wants us to get this down to the end of the lane. And, and I just, that always stuck with me. And I've really tried to help people understand that over the years that, you know, this is God's story that he invites us into. And especially when it comes to the prophetic, we all see in part, we all know in part, we're all going to hear part of it and not hear part of it. We're all going to mess it up, you know, but, but we're in process and that process doesn't make God nervous and it shouldn't make us nervous to be able to, to, as long as we know, that we're sons and daughters and that we're loved and that, that God's going to, God can use us in spite of ourselves and in, in the areas that we come short. And, and I, I mean, I think you have to take prophecy out of the box of what, how we've experienced before. Like this person comes into town and they are, you know, they've been anointed by God yeah. and they are going to prophesy over the congregation. They'll pick out the chosen few and they'll give them work. 
And there's nothing wrong with that. That is how God used that. Right. And But God is so much more than that. I was on a class, I was on a class the other night and I, I was coaching some prophets. Um, and so they took us into breakout rooms and the challenge was, and these people are studying how to be prophets and all that kind of stuff. And the challenge was, I want you to prophesy over your partner in the room, um, with no words. Wow. And the second person who started prophesying, I literally was in tears because the anointing of the Lord fell and you could feel the tangible presence of God in a breakout room on zoom. And they were prophesying over someone else on a screen, not mm. using words, yeah. but in a way that showed the heart of the father and that changes culture. Yeah. You are not required. And then the next exercise we went in and they were like, okay, I want you to sing over this person what God has to say to them. With not a song. I mean, man, I know you're a great musician and all that kind of stuff. So it may be easy because you've written songs. It may be easy, but for someone that's not, you know, like I'm going to sing and everyone who tried it did it. It was so successful. And it's yeah. like, how do you not prophesy? You don't say anything. Mm. You don't risk. Yeah. Because he's wanting to move in and through us all the time. I mean, it's, it's, I've Absolutely. been saying for years is, you know, the essence of walking in the kingdom is to see and agree with heaven, right? We see, see, feel, sense, hear, understand the nudge, whatever it is that God's doing. And then we agree with it. We say, yes, we give it our, our yes of faith. We step out in that. And but that, I mean, let's be honest, that stepping out can be nervous, right? If, if God says sing or God says paint or God says do this, we, again, identity, right? You got to get to the place where you're like, even if I do this and I feel like I look stupid, I know God's on it and I can trust him for the results, even though I, don't, I may not get it right now, right? Well, and we all know, I mean, the, the hardest, the hardest note to play when you're writing a new song is the first note, you right. know, the hardest brush paint to paint is the first one the hardest you know in my world fabric to cut is the first fabric going okay i've committed yep. <laughs> like yep. i'm chopping this up you know and and i think that that's true with prophecy the hardest thing is so you have to provide an environment which is what i'm going to do in the workshop is that you provide an environment where somebody is safe like this is safe. It's okay for you to screw up. It's sure. okay for you to miss God. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to celebrate it if you miss God, because guess what? You've tried. Right. You've stuck your neck out there. You've yeah. said, this is what I think I hear God saying. And as you pursue that, the brush paintings get easier. Yeah. The music comes easier. The yeah. cutting of the fabric is easier. The prophesying is easier. Yeah. And you start, and then that affects almost every aspect of what you're doing because yeah. then as I'm making things I'm like I'm prophesying into this like Paul prayed over fabric yeah come on yeah like wow. and it doesn't have to be the Jesus painting not that there's anywhere with that right. but it doesn't have to be the Christian art it has to carry I am now opening right. myself up to what the father is saying i'm listening to holy spirit and as i'm creating i'm prophesying into that and then when people and this is key for artists especially if you're at you know festivals or whatever wherever you're selling your stuff you know you're interacting with the culture with people who want to touch from the lord yeah they're attracted to your work because the spirit that it carries yeah and I, I, I've said for years, I think God not only wants us to create signs and wonders, he wants us to be signs and wonders, right? And it's, it's, that, it's that life that we live that brings us in front of somebody where a relationship can, can be developed, a word can be given, a whatever. Can, and it's, it just echoes exactly what you're, what you're saying. So, and, so for those, and we need know, folks, to get, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say for somebody that's wanting to kind of step out in that for the first time, you know, what would you say have been some things that have been helpful for you uh, in that process to encourage somebody that is maybe going, wow, this is, this is new to me. Um, I've heard about this on the podcast before, but it's, it's a new thing. It's not in the normal stream 
of the body of Christ that I'm a part of. So how would I, how would I begin stepping out in, in this process? Well, I'm going to run a workshop October 28th. Um, it's a one day workshop and it's just going to be a tasting of, Hey, here is how you can some basic fundamental teaching of what the Bible says about prophecy where you are and just some some fundamental things that you as an artist can can experience as exercises in a safe environment that we are going to celebrate your prophetic journey because awesome. as you change culture you need to be healthy in the prophetic and yeah. i just i know that this has been I, I mean my life got turned upside down when god said that to me and i was like what I I've lost my entire business. Now I'm not doing anything. And God just birthed this huge burning of my heart of you've got to train up artists yeah, in yeah. the prophetic yeah. because that's going to change culture. Mm, so good. So good. Now I know folks are going to want to know your website and we'll put that in the, in the description and, and all that kind of stuff, but where can they find that information about the, the workshop and all the other stuff that, that you're doing with emerging prophetic artist.com. Awesome. Awesome. Good stuff. Yep. And then you're and we're going to start with one workshop, but I'm going to do some more and it will probably end up being in a school. So, know. you know, that's the thing I love about you. You're, you're, <laughs> you're not like, I'm just going to run a little workshop. You're like, it's going to the nations. We're going to do it. It's gonna be we are, <laughs> we are, we are. I'm telling you. I love it. Yes. And, and I'm taking, you know, writing it down, making it plain. So I can run with it. Yeah. Come and on. God is just, he's been all over this with me. And I'm like, ah, oh, just, I, I just am not, I can't get away with it. Like every time I'm opening up the word, God's going, yeah, look, prophetic artistry. Look, yeah. this is what it is. Yeah. Come on. So. Come on. Well, Lynn, it's a joy to have you on today. I know that folks are going to be encouraged. And if you've been feeling out there, guys, like you're, God is wanting to move in that direction uh, in, in your life. I hope this has been encouraging for you today. We've had so many great episodes over the years uh, on the podcast about prophetic art, what it means to flow prophetically in your work, uh, that sort of thing. So we'll put some links in uh, down below that you can check out some of those other episodes, as well as the link to uh, to all that Lynn's doing in this new workshop that's coming out. But Lynn, thanks for being on today. It's been uh, a real joy to, to be with you. It's so good to see you again. I'm 